Hi guys, welcome to the next video in our series of spectroscopy. Um, this video is going to be all about UV vis, which is ultraviolet and visible light spectroscopy. So ultralight, or excuse me, ultraviolet and visible light um, is just using the ultraviolet and the rainbow portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. So this is more energetic than infrared, therefore it's a higher frequency. Um, just remember looking at this electromagnetic spectrum down here, um, we've already talked about the um, radio waves and then infrared, and now we are on the visible and the ultraviolet. Okay, so this is a higher energy, higher frequency. Um, the visible light portion is a very narrow range, only about 400 to 700 nanometers in wavelength. Um, that's the only light that we can see. Our eyes actually cannot detect um, the ultraviolet wavelength, which ranges from 10 to 400 nanometers. So how it's used. Um, the UV vis actually affects the most weakly held electrons, or the valence electrons, um, and this causes the electrons to transition from one energy level to another. Um, it's just transitioning um, in the atom, it's not moving out of the atom at all, right? Just moving around through the different energy levels. Um, this can actually affect the chemical bonding. So this picture down here gives us an idea as to which energies cause which transitions. So the bigger energies, so for example the blue, okay, notice it's going from n equals 7 to n equals 2. Um, this is a high energy, okay, and that makes sense because blue is high in energy and we're jumping a lot of energy levels here. Uh, versus red, which is just falling one energy level, that's not very much energy, and that makes sense because red also is not as much energy. Um, think about the flame test. So when you burned copper, for example, it was a, a greenish blue. Um, that was much more um, energetic than, say, lithium, which burned red. So with the UV vis spectroscopy, compounds that contain transition metals uh, with partially filled d orbitals tend to be the most colorful and the most suitable for visible light spectroscopy. So for example, copper, when you create a copper solution, it's a nice bright blue color that's very suitable for visible light spectroscopy. Um, the more colorful, the better, right? We're using it with spectroscopy that depends on color and visible light, so the more colorful, the better. Um, many other excitations um, are associated with UV light, um, and UV vis spectroscopy is most commonly used in quantitative analysis of solutions through Beer's Law. Um, and I've briefly talked about Beer's Law in the summer work, uh, looking at chapter four in solutions. But we're actually gonna do some labs with Beer's Law once we get to the solutions chapter in our textbook. Uh, with Beer's Law, if you actually take a look at this graph, with Beer's Law, we typically look at absorbance versus concentration. Um, and what we can actually do is we can look at this plot. Um, and if we know the absorbance at different points, we can actually use that to determine the concentration. So the most important thing with UV vis is you have to have some sort of color. So as the color of the solution fades, either from a reaction or from diluting it, the absorbance decreases. All right, so here's an example. Um, we can actually determine the concentration of this solution based on the absorbance. Um, if it absorbs a lot of light, um, what that means is it does not transmit light. So looking at the um, five minutes versus two minutes, um, this uh, five minute line, so this, or excuse me, this zero minute. So we're looking at zero minutes versus two minutes. So this zero minute line um, actually absorbs more light than the two minute sample, right? Because the peak is higher. So when we read this graph, it absorbs more light. If it absorbs more light, that means it transmits less light. Um, and so this can be very useful when you're dealing with solutions and you're looking at actually determining the concentration of an unknown solution. Um, there's actually a great lab that you could do where you actually determine the amount of copper that's in a brass sample. 
So if you do a lot of work with metals, which is becoming much more popular, um, you can actually use UV Vis to determine uh, the percent of a metal within a mixture. So even though this may not be the most energetic form of spectroscopy, it has many, many useful applications, both in chemistry um, and in other fields.